Thank you, Jason. Um, hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, I think my initial observation of the day is uh, very promising around how much of what we've seen and heard today resonates or at least taps in uh, to part of this presentation. And I think that uh, in a lot of ways, uh, while we're looking at different strategies and potentially different outcomes, uh, the way we're getting there seems to be uh, very similar. So I'm from PGI, uh, as Jason uh, outlined. Um, I will try and be as resourceful with the time as possible, perhaps eight or ten minutes. Uh, I thought I would start with a little bit of background around uh, who we are, PGI itself, and I think that will provide a nice segue into uh, the actual topic uh, today. So apologies if it's a little dry, um, but uh, as with these things, I think if we paint a, a clearer picture, uh, you may get a better understanding at the same time. So who is PGI? Premier Gateway International is an independent totalisator business based in Isle of Man which provides hosting for horse racing and sports pools in addition to enabling co-mingling and connectivity for other wagering operators and customers. PGI is owned by Paul Malala Gold International Limited and Tabcorp Europe Holdings Limited under a joint venture arrangement uh, that has been in place since 2012. And as one of the world's largest wagering hubs, PG op operates uh, pretty much all year round, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, covering on average around 150 race meetings uh, every day. Our core business, and this background I think is also important, uh, is to be a totalisator business. Uh, but we have uh, in recent times concentrated on, on other elements. And if I just go backwards for one moment and talk about our core business. The de we, we deliver resilient hub connectivity, integrations and other business-to-business -business services, provide access to international pools for the, the high-volume customers, um, host and commingle parimutuel pools, whether they be the A pools themselves or perhaps in uh, other cases the B pools, offer retail, race course and other terminal software uh, solutions. Um, and some of that is done internally uh, and some of it is done um, externally with partners such as uh, Amto. I mentioned that we have started to take a slightly different view of the world over the past six to 12 months in so much as we are strategically looking at the tote business. So fundamentally still a service provider uh, and very proud of that, but we want to ensure the long-term sustainability and relevance of parimutuel betting being mindful of the, the ever-changing landscape. And to that end, we are, are focusing more heavily on innovation. So I'll touch on a couple of the things that we have worked on before leading into the core of today's presentation. There are a couple of things that I think will interest you. Uh, and again, they do cross over to some extent with some of the things we've already heard today. And the first one is the development of a parimutuel multi-leg cash out. We know of the extraordinary evolution and success of cash out in the fixed odds arena. PGI now has a product on its system that calculates cash out offers on tote wages. The second is the creation of new bet types for the next generation of customers. We see esports as being pivotal to, to that and I was encouraged by some of the comments made by a, an earlier speaker around perhaps the size of uh, payouts being an impediment to some of those customers coming into the market, certainly parimutuel. Uh, offerings can offer uh, that type of payout. Um, how do we interact with these customers? I I'm sure that's the eternal question right now, um, but I'm sure as well that it's not through the traditional platform, so we do need to come up with some new bet types around that. And the third um, is the voucher wagering app, which is the focus for the remainder of the presentation and particularly useful for race courses. I don't think it's necessarily limited to race courses, um, but uh, most of what I speak about today will be geared around uh, how it can work for, uh, for them. So cashless wagering, uh, in a broad sense, we have uh, had a long association with a business based in Liverpool, England called Digital Design Labs and they developed a, a product uh, called Tote Ninja, which is already, is already live in a number of uh, different regions uh, around the world. Certainly in the Americas, uh, it, has, uh, it has taken off to some extent. Um, the premise is, is reasonably simple. You buy a voucher uh, for whatever value the customer desires. You enter a 12-digit code in, uh, in a mobile device. Wages are made using uh, the internet-based betting platform. And finally, that voucher uh, is cashed out at any time, uh, you know, presumably at the end of a race meeting. 
So seeing enormous value in this concept, PGI has partnered with Digital Design Labs to create bespoke versions of Tote Ninja. And uh, we're very close to launching some of those uh, into uh, marketplaces far and wide uh, around, the uh, around the globe. Uh, the, d the voucher will generally look like the one you see on your screen. Uh, it has a barcode there for cashing out uh, and importantly, the opportunity uh, is there to sell these vouchers at various locations uh, and perhaps uh, even prior to arriving at a race course um, uh, or at a venue, for instance, where, where that technology uh, is offered. Um, but they can be made available at the entry point as you come into the race course. Uh, they can be available at traditional tote windows and they can also be available from mobile couriers. I'll touch upon the last two points uh, in a little bit more detail now because I, I, I think that they're the ones that, that are most important, at least in the short term, some of the others perhaps in the longer term. So what you see on the screen at the moment is just uh, a typical race course terminal interface and you can just see on the, uh, on the, the right hand side there, about halfway down on the right hand side, just a, a little icon, a, a button uh, with the option there for the, the seller to, uh, to print out or, or sell a voucher. Um, in, in, the, the case, in this case, the, the, the teller would be selling a bet, uh, wouldn't be selling a bet per se, but obviously that voucher would be used uh, for betting uh, on, the, on the application. The other option, which I think is far more promising, no, sorry, I beg your pardon, um, I might not have shown that particular screen, but that's uh, the terminal software interface there where the voucher uh, icon can be seen down the right-hand side. Um, moving a little bit into the future and again touching on what Jason said, and this is probably even more progressive in the sense that you're taking the point of sale to the customers, um, and we see that at race courses a lot. I don't think it matters where you go racing. Uh, you will see uh, people find their spots on a race course and, and not really want to move too much. Um, and I think that's certainly true of non-expert uh, uh, bettors um, uh, or, or first-timers or once-a-year type uh, race goers uh, uh, where they do find their spot and, and they're happy to, to drink and eat and, and converse. So if you want them to wager with you, you have to go and uh, find them. And so this collection of devices that's on your screen, and I, I won't run through all of them individually, they're, they're probably quite self-evident actually, um, but it's, uh, it's what we dub the, the tote in a bag. It basically has everything that you need there to go out and sell a bet, or to, in this case to sell the voucher, and it just operates on, on an Android and Bluetooth technology. Fully mobile, printer, uh, printer and all, just another way to sell this voucher. And that's of course the premise of today's presentation, but this technology obviously uh, can sell individual bets as well. So in terms of placing the bets, um, the, 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 once you have the voucher, the next step is to load it into, uh, into the app. And that can be a smartphone, a tablet, and even some older technology, you'll see a bit of a dinosaur phone there, but you can actually use that uh, to place bets. And that's basically 2G technology. And the importance of that, I think, um, I will come back to a little bit later, but it is really an important point that you can use that 2G technology. Um, it's all very easy to navigate through. It's touchscreen driven, something that we're all used to these days, uh, and a clickable back arrow if you find yourself at a page you didn't want to be on. Um, the key benefits uh, really are that it eliminates uh, queues and trips to fixed points of sale, which is something that I've just touched upon. And it's a private and personalised experience, which is actually something that Jason touched upon in the preamble, uh, the ability to do pretty much all of your betting um, when you want and, and how you want with that uh, privacy as well. Um, and and as, as I said, the, 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 the further point on this is that up until, I guess, 2010, uh, the sale of mobile uh, devices was about in line with PC units. Um, since then, uh, mobile devices outstripped the sale of PC units by about uh, four to one. So that exponential growth of, of mobile really does highlight the need for where we're going with this particular uh, technology. And I think one other, uh, I, I guess, um, anecdote, if you like, from the millennials, um, is, is that basically uh, they don't live without their mobile phone. I think 80% or in that vicinity claim that the first thing they do in the morning is reach over for their mobile phone. And uh, being millennials, I doubt that's the alarm. But um, 
uh, 87% uh, claim that their mobile phones never leave their side. So it's not something that you don't already know, but uh, those statistics uh, uh, pretty much tell us where we need to go with, it, with our business. It's also quick and simple. Um, no different to walking up to a window and placing your bet verbally. You select the race, you select the bet type, you select the runners, you select the amount, you confirm the wager, you check the updated voucher balance, and you check all live and uh, resulted bets. Uh, the simplicity, it, it really is retained and perhaps even enhanced uh, using this app. Uh, as I said, they are the exact same steps you would take if you were verbalising a bet and obviously perhaps even without the embarrassment of getting that wrong. Again, not for the people so much in this room, but for the first time race goers, the novices uh, and the non-experts. And, uh, and it's each, step, each step literally takes one second, and it's easy to say one second, but it really literally, once you're familiar with the layout, it's just that quick in terms of the touchscreen uh, technology. I've just provided a couple more screenshots here um, on, 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 uh, fr from, the, from the app itself. The one on the left is a summary of bets page. It's, it's no different really to any type of, uh, of betting app that you might see. Uh, clearly shows the bets, whether they've been uh, won or lost and whether they're live or resulted. And the one on the, uh, on the, uh, on the right hand side is just uh, another example of the, uh, the, the, the screen and how it might look uh, for this particular version anyway. Uh, in terms of the balance, uh, and that person's actually done quite well. Started with $10 or £10 and ended up with 284 so we can only hope for similar success ourselves. Um, so, you know, they, they are all just one step away from the home page as well, uh, which is, uh, again, back to the simplicity. So in terms of resilience and function, um, this slide is a little bit less pretty than the, the, the previous ones, but I think from a business and strategy perspective, probably more important. And these are, these are the, the key points. The app uses minimal data to maximise speed and customer experience. It's so light that it can tr uh, transmit a, two, a bet using 2G technology. Um, now this is extremely important, especially on race days when potentially tens of thousands of customers are either using the voucher system uh, or, or connecting to the network uh, for other reasons. So if you can transmit a bet using 2G technology, it's fair to say that if you have 3G and 4G, the process, even with lots of people using uh, the network, uh, will be almost guaranteed of getting that bet on. And very, very important to keep in mind. And we've had some discussions around Wi-Fi today and, and network issues, and that they will be uh, an increasingly growing issue for race courses. Um, it, it displays key wagering triggers. And this is where the balance is, an interesting part of the discussion. So there are wagering triggers. People will like to bet on certain jockeys. They will like to see the last three runs of a particular horse, perhaps other information. But uh, there has to be a balance between how much data, if you, if you put too much enriched data on there, then you slow it down. All of a sudden, that ability to place bets with 2G data is reduced to some, uh, with 2G technology is reduced to some extent because of the data. So. Uh, Minimal, uh, minimal amounts of data. Now, that traditional information that we see on race courses, uh, colours, uh, silks as they might be called in some parts of the world, um, and uh, trainers' names and a whole host of other things are still relevant and they still need to be supplied by the race courses themselves. One of the key factors here to, to keep in mind around this particular app is that it's not a traditional betting app in the way that a corporate bookmaker or other wagering operators might produce. It's designed to effectively take the terminal from behind the tote window and put it into, into somebody's hand. And, uh, and that's, that's the important balance to be able to strike between the two. Now as technology gets better and better, and I'm sure it, continue, it will continue to do so, uh, perhaps we can load a little bit more data into it. But it really is a balance, uh, and we believe that the, the, the most important part is actually getting the bet on, uh, as opposed to providing uh, too many of those triggers, even though we realise that they are very important. Um, and uh, as off-course incarnations of this particular uh, product, which I'll talk about a little bit more later on, obviously will have the capability to, uh, to include more data because they won't be as restricted by so many people trying to use Wi-Fi, for instance, um, but, uh, but also the, um, the, the network itself in, in some circumstances. Uh, we've talked mostly about racing or in, in that context today, but one of the things that this app can do also is offer products that are non-racing, um, and we're seeing more and more of that. Uh, you will see, hopefully, you will see one of the lines there uh, 
prompting uh, post-time poker, which was a, which was a, a, a parimutuel product that, par uh, that PGI uh, once hosted. And uh, all, of, all of that is designed to show is that we can offer choice for the customers. And uh, it doesn't have to be um, poker, it doesn't have to be racing, uh, it can be sports, it can be esports, for instance. So that offering pretty much is, uh, is, is open-ended to the imagination and, and obviously um, it must sit within the, the, the respective jurisdictions worldwide. But in, in a generic sense, if, you have the, if you're able to offer a betting, uh, betting on a particular product, then uh, clearly in that situation, you, there is no limit. Um, commercial objectives, most important subject, I think. Um, in summary, uh, there is no limit to the product offering, uh, as I just mentioned, and certainly international commingling uh, provides base liquidity, which is so vital for parimutuel betting, and it's also about giving the customers that choice. Um, multiplying investments. Now, in some parts of the world where the Tote Ninja uh, voucher system is being utilised, we've seen situations where one voucher can equal 50 individual bets. It's the sort of multiplier effect uh, that's hard to argue with. Uh, another point that was made today, um, again uh, relevant to this particular application, is, is the collection of customer information and to drive loyalty through, through that interaction. Um, uh, uh, something I've already touched on a couple of times but I think it's worth reiterating and that's to supply a simple solution for, for non-expert bettors. And perhaps the extension of all of this, um, depending on where the race course is, and I am talking generically today because obviously we have guests from all over the world and it's not always a one-size-fits scenario, but it does have the, the, the capability and capacity to re reduce sale resources uh, needed by, uh, needed by uh, the, the, the race courses. Um, and then, you know, I think it's, it's one that's uh, certainly uh, worth mentioning. And I think the, f the experience has to be fun. Again, that's a, a theme that's been mentioned a couple of times today. Um, and, I, and often for first time race goers and non-expert players, it's not fun, so they decide they're not to bet uh, at all. Um, so that takes me to my last slide today, which is about the future, and there is future development already in play around this particular app, um, including a payment gateway uh, is, is an obvious one. At the moment, it's just using cash to buy, for the, vou to buy the voucher. Uh, expand to an off-course ADW website with betting account functions is an obvious uh, aspiration as well. The utopian position, uh, on a much broader sense, is that purchasing one voucher then gives you the power uh, to make all of your expenditure across the race course at the different points of sale, whether it's wagering, food, beverage, merchandise, tickets, uh, etc. And the technology to do that is actually already here. Um, what is going to be a little bit more difficult to overcome is, is some of the compliance structures and legislation um, and every, ju every jurisdiction uh, will have individual issues to sort out there. But as I said, the technology is already there. The ability to do so in a lot of countries is still problematic and those conversations uh, are required uh, to be had with the regulators, but, but clearly it's possible. So on that note, thank you and uh, hopefully I was quick enough. Well, thank you very much, Sam. Um, I can actually vouch for this because um, I've experienced um, this service in operation myself um, just last weekend, in fact, at the race course, and I can say that it's one of the um, fastest and simplest methods of um, betting on course that I've experienced. Um, as someone who bets regularly, probably far too regularly, um, I think we sometimes overcomplicate things because um, as uh, smart technology grows, um, apps get ever, ever more sophisticated, but the data that we use is actually quite heavy, quite complex, and quite dense. And actually, I think that can be a barrier for a lot of people. The beauty of this system, it literally is just one click, and I think it's um, you know, something that will appeal um, to all types of race goers, whether experienced or, or novice race goers. The question I had for you, Sam, really was, um, you know, what, when do you see this um, becoming commonplace on course? You were talking about you've got um, potentially a couple of launches, um, you know, in the pipeline. And then that uh, utopia vision, how, do you, how far do you think we're away from getting that um, one-stop shop cashless solution? Yeah, as I mentioned, the technology is there for us to do that already, uh, but there will be uh, discussions in various jurisdictions around the best way to make that happen and, and how the compliance fits around that. You know, for instance, uh, uh, some parts of the world, you, you, you can't sell a bet at the same 
point of sale as, as a, an alcoholic beverage, for instance. So that's more of a hurdle to get over than the technology itself. The technology is there. I'm sure it will happen and probably happen in some jurisdictions quicker than uh, in others. Um, but as I said, this app, uh, the Tote Ninja original um, product, uh, has been launched and has worked well in various places around the world, but we see it uh, certainly growing in, 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 in other areas as well. Great, we'll watch that with interest. Um, before I allow Sam to sit down, do we have any questions from the floor, please? Any questions on the presentation you've just heard? When it gets this late in the day, you, you normally get, get lucky and get away with it. Well, I was actually banking on no one being here, so thank you. <laughs> Sustain. No questions at all? Last opportunity. In which case, we'll just say thank you very much to Sam Natai. Um, thank you to Francois and all of our presenters that we've heard this afternoon.